Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. I am excited, we are starting a brand new series together and it's all about science and the fact that God is the master scientist. Now, what do you think about science? Do you like it? Do you love it? Would you rather leave it behind? What are your thoughts on science? When I was a kid, Oh, I didn't like science class in school. I dreaded it because my teacher would always say, all right, let's get out our science books. And then we would read and read and read and read. And the things didn't make sense. And so I started to believe or think, oh, I don't like science. Oh, I'm not good at science. And because I'm not good at science, I do not like science. And I had that attitude all the way through high school, all the way through college, all the way through being an adult. Ugh, science. But then something happened. Something happened. Now, before I tell you what happened, I want you to grab a piece of paper. It could be a post-it note, it could be a scratch paper, whatever it is. I want you to grab a piece of paper and I want you to pause this video and on that piece of paper, I want you to draw for me a scientist. Will you draw a scientist? What do you think? What does your scientist look like? So grab a piece of paper, pause me and draw a scientist. And then once you've got your scientist done, press play. All right, have you got your scientist? I'll show you mine. What does your scientist look like? Here is my scientist. All right, so he's got a perfectly round head for some reason, but crazy hair. Does your scientist have crazy hair or normal hair? How did you draw your scientist? I gave mine glasses. Maybe they're glasses to actually see through. Maybe they're the safety glasses, right? So that nothing gets in your eyes. I gave him a mustache and a bow tie and then, right? the white lab coat, right? The coat with the buttons, here's some pens in his pocket, all the pockets. This was my scientist. What about your scientist? What's your scientist look like? If you're doing this with maybe some siblings or some friends, compare your scientist drawings. What do they look like? Why did you make your scientist look this way? Well, I'll tell you something. When I was a kid, this is what I thought a scientist looked like. I thought that a scientist had crazy hair because something exploded in the lab. They mixed the wrong chemicals or they got electrocuted or something. Maybe that's what I saw on TV or in books. Just that mad scientist, that crazy scientist personality. Well, I told you that something happened for me that made me realize that maybe science wasn't what I was thinking after all. And it was when, actually probably less than five years ago, I met a scientist. So I'm a teacher and I was in my classroom with my students and I brought in a guest speaker and this guest speaker was a science teacher. And he looked even like my imagination of a science teacher. He had crazy white and gray hair and he wore glasses and he had a goatee. And this science teacher, I just knew like, oh, he's gonna be able to teach something really awesome to my students because I'm not good at science and I can't teach them this stuff. So he can do it. You wanna know something? He came into my classroom and he gave me something. He gave me this and he goes, put it on. And what do you think it is? It's a lab coat. It's a lab coat. And he goes, oh, if I can find my other sleeve here because I'm sitting down. He goes, this coat is for you. He goes, because you are a scientist. And I thought to myself, what? What? I can't wear the fancy, fancy scientist coat. I'm not good at science. I'm not a scientist. And he goes, no, you're a scientist, so you need the lab coat. And all of a sudden, something, a light bulb went off in my brain. Because all along, I had thought that to be a scientist, you had to look a certain way, 
You had to like certain things. You had to be good at certain things. And maybe it was the type of thing where it's like, well, maybe if I have the fancy schmancy lab coat, that instantly makes me a scientist. Oh, so now I've got this coat on. Now oh, I'm good, right? Now I can read my science book and I'm going to know what they're talking about. I can mix some chemicals together and it's going to work every time. It's going to be great. It's not a magic lab coat, is it? Or I thought, well, maybe if I have the right glasses, right? The safety glasses. Well, these aren't safety glasses at all, right? Everything's going to go through those glasses. But I thought maybe if I have the right glasses, if I have all the right stuff, if I've got the right equipment, then I'll be a scientist. No. No. I realized something that day when he gave me that lab coat. We are all scientists. We are all scientists. If I were to draw a scientist, you know what I would do? I would hold up a mirror and have you look at your reflection in it because you are a scientist. We are all scientists. You might go, well, I don't know, I'm so sure, but we are because God is the master scientist. He is the creator of science. And he created us in his image. He made us just like him. And so he has made us to be scientists too. Being a scientist isn't what we often think it is. So I'm gonna write down, like, let's think here together. What, what is science? What do you think science is? Well, we could look it up in the dictionary, but I want you to think science is like the world around us, right? The natural world around us. It's the natural world, all right? So nature or what else? What things are made of? The oceans, the stars in the sky, the animals, vegetables and fruit. What about what our bodies are made of? What about plastic and wood and all the, the building blocks of our world? It's that natural world. That's what science is. And then within that natural world, scientists, we observe it and we experiment about it. We observe it and experiment about it. And so that's what we're going to be doing in our yellow chair devotionals this time. All right. Each time that we get together for this series, we're going to start with an observation and we're going to do an experiment. And then we're going to come full circle to what that teaches us about God, the master scientist. But here's the thing, because we're all scientists and I know, I know that you guys all have these qualities. We need to think, well, what what are some qualities or characteristics of a scientist? Well, the first one that comes to mind is curious. Are you curious about things? I know that you're probably curious about all sorts of things. And to be a scientist, you get to be curious about why do leaves change color in the fall and then fall off the tree? Or we get to be curious about why do dogs sniff each other's butts? We get to be curious and go, why does that happen? Why does that do that? What is that about? That's being curious. And then because we're curious about it, we're going to become problem solvers. Do you like puzzles or games? Maybe you like reading mystery books, maybe the Boxcar Children or How oh Man Detective Zack, all sorts of mysteries. And you want to solve the mystery. Who did it? What happened? What did... That's what science is. We have our question and now we're going to go thinking about it and be problem solvers and collect the clues to solve the mystery. The mystery of why is every single snowflake unique and different? How can air 
and cold air freeze a water droplet into such a crazy cool pattern. We're mysteries detectives, right? We are problem solvers as scientists. But as scientists, we also need to be patient. We've got to be patient because it doesn't always work and we don't always solve the mystery. We don't always figure it out. And so we got to keep at it. When Thomas Edison was figuring out how to make light bulbs, he failed over and over and over again. He kept messing up. He couldn't figure out what to put in the middle of the light bulb that would light up. And people asked him, you've tried hundreds of different things. Aren't you tired? Aren't you just gonna give up? He goes, no. I've just found a whole bunch of ways not to make a light bulb. And so he and his team, they kept at it. We're patient. We don't give up. Sometimes it's not gonna work. That doesn't mean that we're not a scientist if our experiment doesn't work. That doesn't mean that we're a failure. No, that means we've learned a way that it doesn't work. And then we get curious again. Now, as a scientist, we are creative. We are creative because we go, how could I figure out why the sun, the light from the sun is actually older then like it's like time travel because it takes so long for the light from the sun to reach us. And we have to be creative going, how can I figure that out? Because I can't look at the sun or I'll go blind. Like, how can I figure this? And we have to be creative about it. And maybe we draw some things and we create dioramas or pictures. We have to be creative with how we apply our curiosity. We need to be persistent. So just like being patient, being persistent means I'm not going to give up. I want to, I want to figure this thing out. And because God is the master scientist and we're made in his image, he's going to help us have those light bulb moments. And then being a scientist means being brave, being brave, because we're asking hard questions and going, I don't know what we're going to figure out here. I don't really know how this works, but I, I'm going to try it. And some people, there's a lot of scientists through history where people went, you're crazy. You're crazy. And they had to be very brave. Being a scientist takes all these characteristics and more. You can think, what are some other characteristics of a scientist? Some different things that we need to put on with our lab coat. But I want you to think about this as we go forward into this new series. You are a scientist. I want you to go look in the mirror after this video is over and tell yourself, I am a scientist. And let's read a couple of Bible verses together here to kind of bring this home. So grab your Bible if you've got one handy. We're going to go right to the beginning of our Bibles in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 is when God, the master scientist, decides to get really creative. And he says, I'm, I'm going to create a whole world. I'm going to create a whole world. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, verse 26, it says this. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image and likeness and let them rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the tame animals, over all the earth and over all the small crawling animals on the earth. So God created human beings in his image. In the image of God, he created them. He created them male and female. So God created us. He created us and he created each of us as a scientist. Let's flip over to Psalms. Psalms, right about the middle of our Bibles. If we open to the middle, we get to Psalms and we're going to be in Psalms chapter 139. 139 verse 13 and 14. Chapter 139 verses 13 and 14. And here David says, you talking about God, made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's womb. 
I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. I know this very well. We are so special. God has made us. We are, what did he say here? Amazing. We have been made in an amazing and wonderful way. Did you know that you are amazing and you are wonderful because that's how God made you? Now, when that science teacher gave me this lab coat and he said, you need this coat because you are a scientist. That changed everything for me because I didn't think anymore, oh, I don't like science. Oh, I'm not good at science. Are you kidding he just told me I'm a scientist, so I must be. And that's what God is like too. God looks at you and says, hey, you aren't all these things that you think about yourself. You, you might think, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm a failure. I'm not musical enough. Or I'm not da da da. And God goes, no. He looks at you and goes, you are my child in whom I am well pleased. You are my special creation. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're amazing. I made you that way. He goes, you're my child. And to seal the deal, because of Jesus, he goes, here, have a robe of righteousness. Have a robe of righteousness, which means that we are covered in the special robe of Jesus' love. When Jesus went to the cross for you and me out of his amazing love, at his death and resurrection from the grave, he defeated the enemy. He defeated Satan. And he said, want to know something? The enemy has been attacking you far too long, telling you lies. Lies like, oh, you're not a scientist. You're not good at science. Oh, you don't want to like science. Until... God comes along and says, put on this robe. You are my child. You are so loved and special. You are amazing and wonderful. And I made you that way. You are a scientist. God always is speaking truth and love over who we are. Who we are. We are God's special children. And he the master scientist made us to be scientists too. So you're going to go look in that mirror and you're going to say, I am a scientist. And then tomorrow, it's time for us to get to work observing and experimenting. Let's say a prayer together and close. And close. Dear God, oh, you love us. We are so amazing and so wonderful. And that's how you made us. We're made in your image. We are scientists. We are your children. We are loved. We are special. We don't listen to any of those lies of the enemy that say that we are less than what you say we are. And so as we embark on a new adventure of science, may we see you in a brand new way. And may we fall in love with you every single day more and more. We thank you for your love in your name. Amen. All right, my fellow scientists, I will see you tomorrow.